Hello, dear friends. This morning, the last Sunday of 2020, how are you feeling? We all can say, what a year, what an unforgettable year. My first thought about this year overall is that I am grateful for being alive and I am grateful that I am in good health. There are many other things for which I am grateful. I learned some handy ways to pr practice with you through virtual connections and how blessed I am to live close to nature and in a place with a garden. Above all, dear friends, I am deeply grateful to have Dharma buddies with sincere hearts like you. How lucky I am, how lucky we are. Amidst countless blessings, however, I also have to admit this has been a difficult year. When we started 2020 last January, I remember talking about our clear 2020 vision with an excited mind. This is the year of our temple's 15th anniversary, so we were looking forward to celebrational gatherings. Who would have thought that the year would unfold so unexpectedly? For me, there were three especially challenging aspects to this past year. First, I felt sad when some temple friends became disconnected with us because we could no longer meet in person. And the virtual programs we offered didn't work for them. Second, I was saddened and had a heavy mind whenever some of you suffered anxiety, illness, and loss of loved ones from COVID. I felt concerned and limited in my ability to help you. There is a song in Wan Buddhism. This means when living beings are suffering, Bodhisattvas are also suffering. Thus, when you are suffering, I am suffering. Third, ever since Reverend Ginger told me that she was planning to leave our temple in January, I noticed my own anxious energy and found myself worrying about the future. I keep wondering, how will I manage all the temple work without Reverend Ginger? How will I adapt to a new Kyomunim? It always takes time and energy for new Kyomunims to settle in and also for us to get to know and get used to each other. These challenges have given me an opportunity to focus on my daily prayers. May I maintain a sound spirit and calm mind. May I focus on today and this present moment. May I do my best where I am and with what I have. May I find the seeds of hope and growth within my uncertainty about the future. The year 2020, a good year to let go. As a new form of meditation this year, we started online decluttering meditation. Through this practice, I have been tackling a big box of information cards which has been growing for the past 15 years. Each card contains the name and details of those who have come through our temple. Reviewing the cards one by one, I found that I could no longer recognize all the names. 
I know my memory can be limited, but I also know that many people flutter by like butterflies for just a very short time. I wondered, where are these people now? I noticed some are not even alive today. Reviewing, reviewing the cars one by one, I recited each name. And let many go, like a tree letting go of its leaves in autumn. Then I gathered the cars of all those still connected with us, and put them in a special box. I call this box a box of special affinity. I feel deeply bonded with those who have stayed and continued practicing with us. And there is plenty of space in the special box for more names. While decluttering, I felt bitter sweet. Parting is such sweet sorrow. We part with a memory and gratitude, allowing each to go their own way. Everything changes. We accept those who come, and honorably. Release those who go. The practice of letting go is based on the dharma of non-attachment. Our founding teacher Sutta San said, "Every day we must frequently develop and cultivate the practice of non-attachment." He cautioned that strong attachments to relationships and material things. Can lead to unnecessary suffering. What attachments do we have? Attachments to our things, attachment to our health, attachments to our worries, attachments to our desire for control. In the chapter, releasing spirits in transition. Sotesan also said, "If we let go of our worldly attachments and purify our spirit by meditating and listening to Dharma talks, we will liberate ourselves from our pure energy and Dharma power without being aware of it. We can end up delivering even microbes and insects that live nearby. This is like the sun." Whose rays have no intention of melting snow and ice, yet naturally melt them away with its warmth. As we let go of this year, we let go of our attachments to our internal stories, such as regret, sense of guilt, self-doubt, and self-criticism, and unnecessary gossip and thoughts about others. Letting go is a beautiful concept to think about and talk about, but it is not always easy. But it becomes easier to me when I practice meditation, dharma study, and service to others. Would you agree that 2020 has been a powerful year? For spiritual growth, for me and for many of us, we spend more time alone, from the energy of pausing, and with the less sensory distractions. My silent meditations have been deeper. I spend more time looking at the sky, regardless of the season. Our Carolina sky is always beautiful. This year, our environmental consciousness has greatly expanded. We become more awakened and aware that this global pandemic is not purely accidental. In 1916, our founding teacher proclaimed, "With this great opening of material power, let us cultivate a great opening of spiritual power." It is clear that. 
our society has become increasingly materialistic, technologically advanced, and globally integrated. 2020 is a year of great awakening to the urgency of a planetary survival. Climate change is affecting us in surprising ways. For example, long dormant bacteria and viruses trapped in ice and permafrost for centuries are reviving and mutating. Ice caps are melting, ocean levels are rising, and storms are becoming more frequent and severe. Moreover, this year, our awareness of racial injustice was painfully reawakened and continues to simmer as a national koan for us to resolve. Our Temple Online Book Club on Racism was a powerful journey for all 30 participants, guiding us to reflect on racial filters and both conscious and unconscious biases. We are one. We are one. We are interconnected. The other day, it rained cats and dogs. I stood for a while next to the creek in the temple garden and had a moment of a sudden realization. The water from a retention pond flows to the newly acquired land next door. When we removed the fence between the two properties, I saw the flow of water from the temple pond was harming many big trees on our neighbor's land. At the same time, I watched, watched water from our neighbor's property pour into our creek and pond. We are bonded through water. Our neighbor's water becomes ours. Our water becomes our neighbor's. The simple truth of 2020 is, my virus is yours. Your virus is mine. My mindful action affects you, and your mindful action washes through me. So as we look back on the past year, we honor our awakened minds of 2020. We honor our practice of gratitude and respect for one another. Last autumn, adults gathered several times for socially distanced outdoor meditation. For children, we mostly did kids' Zoom meditation, but one time we managed to have an in-person outdoor session. That day, two children came with their father. In silence and with the face masks on, we walked, paused, and sit. We did some qigong and picked autumn leaves. We picked lavender and persimmons. At the end of the session, I bowed to the children to say goodbye. Suddenly, one of the two brothers knelt on the hard gravel ground and bowed to me. Then, the other child followed his brother and also knelt down in the gravel to bow. This touched my heart. In Asian and Buddhist culture, a floor bow is offered as a sign of respect to a teacher. These seven-year-old children spontaneously presented full-floor bows on gravel without minding the rough and dust, dusty surface. This touched my heart deeply because nobody coached them and their expression of gratitude and respect arose from pure hearts. This is one of my most delightful memories of the year. What about you? 
Can you recall your most delightful memories of 2020? People this year had babies, fell in love, got married, got pregnant, recovered, survived, and endured. Some moved, some returned. This year, many of us stayed home all year. We spent time in nature. We cleaned out closets and meditated to declutter our minds. Everyone alive today had a birthday this year. In 2020, in the midst of happy moments and in the midst of strife, limitation, and challenges, many of you have maintained your practice. Our temple has continued a single in-person program every day at 6.30 a.m. In the early morning, when I walk from the residence to the dorm hall, I cover myself with a blanket while looking at all the plants shivering in the cold. Somehow, evergreen plants look colder to my eyes. But without any blanket, they endure frigid temperatures and hold their place. Patty, who has been coming to morning meditation daily, looks like those evergreen trees. She drives through cold air and shows up early every morning, not even wearing a blanket. Some of you have been sitting with us every Saturday and every Sunday, like those evergreen boughs. Thank you for being unwavering. Thank you for being unwavering like those strong evergreens. I want to express special gratitude to those who have shared powerful testimony that in this internet era, Dharma practice can transcend geography. As soon as we opened our online programs, friends who had moved to Maryland, Florida, and Canada joined us. How thrilled we were to see you again, dear Michelle and Christine. How happy we are to practice with you again, dear Kitty, Patrick, Peggy, and Filippo. More spiritual seekers and practitioners far away towns in Virginia and throughout North and South Carolina joined us. Reverends, students, and newcomers participated from Georgia, New Mexico, California, as well as from Korea and other countries. Many new and delightful friends found us through our online offerings deep down in our heart. Many times I have felt Theory with the joy and gratitude, practicing with each other, with each and every one of you through these most challenging times. Dear 2020, dear 2020, thank you for the gift and grace you have delivered to us. We thank you for your great lessons we honor your real and surreal teachings. This year, we have been physically distanced from each other, but we came closer in heart. We have come to appreciate our interconnectedness more than ever. Dear 2020, every month we have been waiting, waiting for you to be done with us. Now here we are at the end of the year and we are done with you. So let's take a moment to be aware of the burdens we have carried. Let's take a walk, let's journal, and let's meditate to honor and release the weight of this past year. For the remaining four days of the year, let us intentionally breathe out and release let us breathe in and breathe out, release 
noticeable and unnoticeable tension from our bodies, thoughts, and feelings. So let's make room for hope, transformation, and enlightenment. Into the new year, let us carry the strength and resilience which we have gained and steadfastly walk toward the light of 2021. May we all have a happy new year.